Here in the red, we have the seed starting mix. And as expected, these are doing really well. Now these are a little leggier than I would like. So I'm gonna drop the grow light a little bit because they're a little tall for my liking. And I didn't catch this sooner, but it, they'll be fine. Um, but nevertheless, the, the leaves look nice and healthy, very green and healthy and robust. So the seed starting mix is, is doing well. And I would say they're probably doing the best. The close second here is the potting mix. The, the, so the green one here, this is potting mix. And you know I'm noticing a little discoloration on some of these leaves, which I'm not sure why, but but they're, they're looking very healthy. Yeah, both of these are starting to grow a little bit. Their first true leaf right in the middle there. So these are looking great. I would say, you know, between the two of these, they're, they're too close to call at this point. In the back left here in the blue, we have the raised bed mix. And something odd is happening with this one. I'm getting a little bit of fungus on the top, it looks like, or I'm not really sure what it is. Something in the soil is causing like a discoloration but the seedlings are quite small. These aren't small, obviously. They're much, much smaller. This one still has the husk on it. They're much, much smaller than the, than the um, two in the front. So, you know, we'll see how these do. And the, the last one here in the gray is the topsoil. And I would say those are doing just as well as the raised bed mix. Um, so, you know, it's too, it's too close to say now, but these have been growing for, oh, maybe, maybe about four or five days now. So we'll see. Actually, I forgot when I actually put these in. Um, I have to go back and check. But we'll see how these do within a few more days. I'm not so optimistic about the, the back two. Again, this is our second experiment. And if you guys remember before, the potty mix actually came in first in terms of leaf growth. This was first the seed starting soil was second, the raised bed mix was third, and the topsoil was fourth. So in the previous experiment, the topsoil, it got about this big, and then it stopped growing. So it's unclear how much more life is left in this um, for the topsoil. I'm not sure if it's gonna keep growing. But one observation that you can't see on camera is that, and I didn't water this since, this is still really heavy. The topsoil likes just to hold on to water and moisture <clears throat> so well. It doesn't drain super well. So if you do use topsoil for your seed starting, I would really recommend if you're going to really saturate the soil, let it dry and air dry for a good, I don't know, maybe five or five or seven days. Because if you put it in there and water it to its full saturation, no matter you know, what you do, it's going to stay pretty wet. So I have a feeling that's stunting the, the, the plant growth. There's just, there's not enough oxygen and drainage inside that soil because it's so compacted and wet. And it might be the, you know, the same case with the raised bed mix. Now this is a little bit lighter, I would say, than the topsoil. Yeah, this is still really heavy. All of these have gotten lighter except the topsoil. This is still pretty heavy though. Um, now we compare this to the seed starting mix. And this thing is just, you know, it's light as a feather. It's just, um, it's, it's so fluffy and, and light, and you can see how it's reflected in the, in the leaves. And the potting mix, you know, to be honest, the potting mix is actually a little bit heavy as well. So if you're, so rule of thumb here, and I don't wanna make any conclusions yet, um, and we're gonna cull these in a minute. The rule of thumb here is that whatever soil you happen to be using, because sometimes in your, you know, in your garage or in your greenhouse, you have some bags of whatever kind of soil you have or happen to buy at a time and you wanna grow some seeds and you don't wanna to go to the store and, or make some seeds so, starting soil or whatnot. So you have, you, know, you have what you have. In that case, the rule of thumb here is that if you're gonna use a topsoil or raised bed soil for starting seeds, make sure the, water, the, the soil isn't too wet, okay? You can get away with really, really wet soil with the seed starting mix because it drains and evaporates really quickly. So if you happen to overwater these, it's not the end of the world because the water's gonna evaporate anyways. But with these two types of soils, and even the potty mix, you wanna make sure that you don't overwater. You, you, and if you overwater in the beginning, it's very hard to, to go backwards and to dry out the soil. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So there's a, a few consistencies with our previous experiment that I wanted to just briefly cover. So first thing is that the seed starting mix and the potting mix are doing the best 
And this was the same as, as last time in the last experiment. Um, the leaves are nice and vibrant. I mean, the potting mix is just, you're seeing not only true leaves, big true leaves here, but a second set of true leaves growing in the middle. These are doing very well. Um, same goes for the seed starting mix. Big, big true leaves. You're seeing some nice growth in the middle here. Like for example, this one right there. Um, they're nice and strong. The stems are nice and hardy and so forth. Um, now there, there's a couple in inconsistencies we could sort of look at too. I mean, as you notice here, I have some of these a little higher up than the others. So when I have the grow light coming down here, you know, it's coming down somewhere around here. I have it about maybe 16, 20 inches above um, these seedling trays when I, on, in the grow room. So obviously the ones in the top are going to get a little bit more light since they're higher up than these bottom ones, but it's only about maybe two inches. That could play a role here, but the reason why I have these at different lengths is because it's a lot easier to see on camera than if they're all just flat. Given that, I mean, is it possible that these are getting more light and they have a little bit of an advantage over the potting mix? Yes, maybe. But even if we take that into consideration, I don't see any big differences here. In fact, the, the potting mix, mix looks fantastic. These are a little leggy. So if you're sort of new to gardening, you might notice that if you don't have enough light for your plants, they'll get too long and they'll sort of plop over. Now I caught these right at the right time because they were getting really long and then I, I increased the light a little bit and that seemed to help. And if you're growing indoors, you would just sort of drop the light. And if you're growing these outdoors, just put them in, in, in more sunny areas. Maybe where you're putting them has, you know, seed starting mix and the potting mix. These are doing great as expected and we'll come back to those in a second. Now the other two, the raised bed mix, excuse me, the um, topsoil here, and the raised bed mix in the blue. Not so great. These are consistent with my previous experiment. You know, I wanted to try this again. They're not doing so great. Both of these, now the topsoil has natural nutrients in it as, as topsoil does. And the um, raised bed mix actually has added fertilizer to it. So this is not a nutrient problem. Um, if it was a nutrient problem, the seed starting mix would not be growing this well because there's no nutrients in this soil. Um, so that's not a nutrient problem. It's a soil structure problem. I haven't added any water to the topsoil since I planted these and they're still quite heavy. And the reason for that is, as I said before, the soil is so dense. If you're going to use topsoil either in your garden or in seedling trays, you have to amend it with something because it just gets so compacted, so heavy. Like I can't, yeah, this is still very, very wet. There's just not enough air pockets within the soil for the moisture to evaporate. So this is my, this is my reasoning for why these, they grow to this size, they germinate, and then that's it. The roots can't really get any deeper than they are now. And they just sort of sit here for weeks like this. For the raised bed soil, it's, I'm assuming something similar is going on. I mean, one difference though is the color. So I'm getting some true leaves in here just like last time, uh, some small true leaves, but the leaves are purple. These other two, like, for example, these aren't purple. These aren't purple. The raised bed mix are purple. They don't look super healthy. They don't look nice and green and vibrant green like these other two here. They're sort of a pale green with purple edges. And to me, that doesn't scream, you know, health and, and vibrance. So yeah, the raised bed mix isn't doing fantastic. It's doing a little bit better than the topsoil. But again, same thing with the topsoil. If you're gonna use raised bed mix, either in your garden or you know, in something else, be aware because again, I haven't watered, I watered this one a little bit because it was getting a little bit light, but it's still just by sort of lifting it up here, I can feel how heavy this is. So there's plenty of moisture in the soil. Um, if, if, if water was a problem, you see sort of droopy leaves or something else, but, and you'd also see the tops, you know, sort of crusted over, but this tray has got plenty of water, so it's a soil structure problem. Okay, so here you can see them all together again. The two winners here, we have the seed starting mix and the potting mix. Um, either of those I recommend using. Again, I didn't use any fertilizer on the seed starting mix because it's sort of a silly 
uh, yeah, in hindsight, it's silly to use fertilizer for a seed starter because you don't want to get you don't want these to get very big before you actually transplant them. There's no reason for them to get that big. These are meant for starting seeds, starting seedlings, and then to be transplanted. They're not meant to be fully fledged, um, you know, plants in, in these things. Um, so you don't want to get you don't want them to get too too big. Like for example, this one over here is huge. And let's just take a look at this one. Now, it looks huge. Actually, the the roots look pretty good. Um, I was expecting this to have more root growth because the, the longer you let these grow in uh, any seed starter, um, you can get some 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 roots that start to bind, and you don't really want that. So this would be perfect, but to let these grow any longer would be sort of silly. And the only way to get them to grow larger for the seed starting mix would probably to be to add some fertilizer, which isn't necessary. So here you have it. Again, we have our second experiment and consistent results of the potting mix growing the biggest, seed starting mix in a very, very close second place, raised bed mix in a third place, feasible but not recommended, and then topsoil I would stay away from for seed starting.